Welcome to the Player Exchange. Today, me and Moneybag Merle, we have a special, special guest. This is a special edition, you know what I mean? Usually we're talking to current high school players, maybe college players, coaches or whatnot, but, you know, we got a Detroit legend, a young Detroit legend. You feel me? Been putting on for the city since, Little League, born and raised here. Took it off in high school, took it off in college, took it off in the league. And, you know, he might, you know, tell us a little something else was next, too. I mean, I don't know. We got some exclusives. You know, we drop exclusives. Rush y'all don't do that, you know. What's good with it, Merle? What's good with Did it? Y'all leave me like this? It's crazy, bro. Hey, man, it's yeah, crazy, know, bro. Same old thing, man, you know. Got a good guest, like you said. We got Devin Fushers in the house. Yeah, on, happy to have what you, up, man. What up, though? Appreciate y'all, baby. Yeah, like you said, Detroit legend, man. So, uh. What got you on the football, man? Who did you play with in, in Little League? Man, I played with the Cubs. My uh, my god daddy, he had us riding around the hood. And uh, my big cousin, Tease, he was over there playing. It was a benefit game. So I pulled up. I'm probably like nine years old. I was just a hooper. Then from there, I seen how live it was. Cubs had their own music, had their own rappers. All the cheerleaders, everybody was going crazy. So I'm like, shoot, I'll play this mug too. It looked fun. What year was that when you started with the Cubs? 03. 03? 20 years ago. Okay. <laughs> who was on them teams with you with the Cubs? Who played with you over there? Uh, shoot, I had JD was on the team. Uh, Biggs was on the team. Royce. Terry Richardson was on the team. Uh, uh, Buddha was on the team. Desmond King. Uh, Tavier Thomas on the team. Uh, we had Malik McDowell on the team. Dang. Carter was on the team. We had a whole bunch. Everybody, oh, y'all was low. Everybody went D one. Right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 y'all was nah, low. Yeah, <laughs> y'all the was older low. team. Keith Moore was on the team. We had Bilal, Didi, uh, Flem. We had we had everybody. Yeah, that sounds crazy, man. So did they always have you a receiver or a tight end or nah, where they start you at? I played everywhere. I played corner. I played running back. Tight end, wide out, safety. I played all of it. I was just an uh, athlete. Was you on the field automatically or you had to sit? Nah, the first year, the first year I was cooling it. I was playing corner, you know, second, third string, figuring out everything. I remember against the Dragons. Dragons, we played the Dragons. I came and hit somebody. Felt good about it. But my second year, that's when I took off. Oh, they, ain't even, they ain't even hit y'all with the first year. Got to play the line type of stuff. Nah, hey, nah, I was too much of an athlete. <laughs> <laughs> man, back in the day, bro, it didn't matter, bro. Like, they had our start, man, I started running backs, quarterbacks, everybody. Like, yeah, that first year on Pony. You going to learn how to uh, hit. You ain't going to do nothing but Oklahoma and bull in the ring all day and bear crawl and play. Bro, we had it. We had it for sure. <laughs> <laughs> we had I had to go against That was my first, like, a yeah, I know how it is. Basketball coming to football. Is mm -hmm. he soft? Is he hard type? What he going to do? Yeah. We had the bloody alley. I had to go against Belisle. So, Belisle was the biggest on the team. So, that set the tone of my toughness. I was, was a hooper. hooper. I was a hooper. We we was the coldest uh, little league team around. So, that's what we was known for. That's what I was known for was hooper. Who was you uh, playing for? The Cubs. We had the Cubs team. A basketball, a basketball team? team? Yeah, we had that's a basketball crazy. team. <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah, I we had that. Yeah, that's why we was such a, a dominant like yeah. organization because we had that the baseball team, all three sports was cold. So it was just like shout out to Tandy, uh, mm -hmm. being Coach Tandy, innovative. all of them. That's crazy, man. Yeah. I just learned something though. I never knew the Cubs had I, a basketball team. Cause I was just hearing about the Falcons starting a basketball team. Though. I'm like, well, okay, that's makes what's sense. up though. So they kind of kept you all together, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Build that camaraderie, camaraderie. I can't even say the word mm -hmm. right now. I'm yeah, tripping though. Is, uh, you know, camaraderie. <laughs> See, there yeah, you I'm go. Funny, and he's uh, education, yeah, funny, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. Public school. <laughs> all our OGs, like all our OGs had kids at the same time. Like, oh, that was crazy. That's what's so crazy about it. So all our OGs, our pops and everybody, they all grew up, went to high school together, all that. Then they all had kids at the same time. Oh, so, so it was written. It was already written yeah, how it was, was going to be. Yeah, uh -huh. That was easy work. Easy. Yeah, that's crazy. So going into Harrison for high school, you know, they got a winning tradition. They've been winning state championships for a minute. Was it easy getting on the varsity team, or did you get there early, and did you get to play early? How did that nah, go? Nah, I was chilling. I was on some hooping. I was hooping. I did not That's really – I was on my first two years. I was just on some – man, I'm just about to hoop. So, I was playing JV. You know, then after that, we go uh, my junior year. 
to get up there. We was always solid in my my grade, like uh, our football group. But I was on varsity sophomore year, so I was chilling. I'm like, all right, it's cool. Junior year, we go win the state championship. So after that, like it was set in stone on that front. Like, oh, this boy Funch cold at both. Right. And then the coach, basketball coach, pulled some bull crap. Like, uh, he made us after like a fast break. He made us do a a suicide during the game. Wait, so I what? Said, yeah, bro. Yeah, it was on some of that type of time out there. So ego trip. Yeah, he was. Yeah, so I was like, you know what? It's cool, bro. I just go play football. I got forty two scholarships, and that was I'm <laughs> straight, bro. I got a hoop again, so it was cool. So, so y'all won that state championship. You said your junior year. Mm-hmm. Who who was on that uh team with you at Harrison? Yeah, uh, it was me. Aaron Burbridge, Mario Ojemudia, uh, Jake Vento, uh, all the OGs that was on there was like uh, Evan Patton, uh, Derek Head, Tommy Vento, all them them they they was like older. So, but my grade, 2012, that's the grade that we all had D1 uh, scholarships and all that. Okay. Mm. How'd you get to Harrison? Like, what my mama school? got. I mean, we got lucky, gang. I ain't go home. Yeah, okay. Hey, my mama just she just moved us out there. Like, I was on so Harrison on twelve mile. I was on ten mile at the time, and Farmington on nine mile. So mm. I never understood how I got to go to Harrison. Well, but then I mean they say I was in the the, the, the range type. But then I had moved to the apartments over there, so it was like everything was sweet. Yeah, it was God's plan. He didn't want you over there at Farmington. That's all it was. <laughs> that's all it was. Yeah, that's for sure, man. So you ran track, too, in high school. You said you played basketball and did the football. So what went into that decision to kind of play multiple sports, and how did it help you, you know what I'm saying, in the long run? I was chilling in track. Don't get the lion, bro. Y'all see the numbers <laughs> and all that, bro. Don't get the lion. So Aaron Burbridge, bro, he was like my biggest motivation, bro. Like he was – Living booby miles at Harrison High School, like mm-hmm. varsity since since sophomore year, all that, like just going crazy. So he was cold at the 400, 200, 100, all that. I used to go to practice, you know, sit at the 50 yard line, look at all the girls run, you know what I'm saying? Keep everything copacetic. I was living my life. But then when the 200 and the, and the long jump came, I just went and performed. That's it. That's how my. My track career went. I had to do something, so I ain't go back to the block. So I was just playing, running track. It's the only reason I ran track. I ain't going to lie to you. They look good. Be honest. Yeah. Authenticity. What you think about that now, though, man, with kids today, man? Exactly. Man, I think it's too, like, just like we was talking about it, we all as, like, older, like, we, it ain't that much of a gap, but it's a gap, so to say, on how these kids was raised now. And... They only pick one sport to play. They only only pick one position to play mm-hmm. and all of it. And it's like we we grew up playing both sides of the ball, having to actually go hustle and play defense in basketball, actually getting in fights in basketball because we playing defense too hard. So it's just like these kids nowadays, they got into that social media stuff and thinking that it's only cool to do one thing. Then be cool at that one thing. Like it's like main reason why I'm going to Japan. They want to integrate seasonal sports, and they see that I play all of these sports. Hold on, stop. Hold on. Hold the presses. Cause, cause you know that that's 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 different information that we getting right now. <laughs> you know, this this man, um, you know, had an illustrious career at Michigan. Went to a Super Bowl his rookie year. And now he just he just gonna up and go to Japan on his hunt. Nah, just gonna go, go just up in Tokyo drift on everybody. That's, that's, that's how you. <laughs> I like that movie type. You feel me? I'm playing. I'm playing. But nah, you know my basketball was my first pass, and so I got the opportunity earlier this year to uh, get the opportunity to play on the team. So we got camp July 17th to the uh, to the 20th. So I gotta go over there for that and uh, just have fun and play my my first pass. So who, how'd that come about? How did it come about that, you know, the off season, you just chilling, you're like, you know what? I might just go hoop in Japan. Like, get some was, Wagyu beef and, you know, <laughs> you know. I was chilling. I was chilling and I've been trying to make the transition. And my big cousin, Tony Harrison, he had a fight in Australia. So I was over in Hawaii 
just kicking it with my people. And I was just like, man, I ain't never been in Japan. And I got a man. I got one of my mans who stay over in, in uh, Japan. I met him at IMG when I was training. So I was like, man, I booked me a little seven, 10 day trip over there, seeing he was gonna be there. He messed around and moved to Tokyo. He used to stay in the country, but he moved to Tokyo from there. I had a basketball op. I was promoting for my water company, you know, doing all that. They wanted to integrate some water over there. I had met with some other people who knew about the alkaline water. So then from there, it was just like, shoot, we want you to play. I'm like, all right. Then they had some more stuff go on. And then another team said, well, we trying to change up and switch like what we've been doing and bring in like a change on some seasonal sports type vibe. Awesome. That's why. So I got my flag football camp. I got my I got my uh, basketball camp, training camp. Then I got my flag football camp, so that I can incorporate flag football at Kyoto University and Tokyo University. So they got them playing. So basketball. So you got them over there playing flag football. Yeah. You gonna hoop over there for them. Yeah. And then you got some water all of a sudden. You know what I mean? You dropping yeah. water on them. You know, some 50 cent type stuff. What's the water, man? Plug us. What's the name of the water? Where can we get it at? Stealth it? Detox Water. It's uh, alkaline. Basically, it's an alkaline filtration system. Okay. So it ain't it ain't like bottled. It's pumped out of a system. So I got my store opening up uh, July 11th in Ann Arbor. It's a crisis prevention center that I'm I'm incorporating uh, Planet. So it's my uh, my lettuce farm. So my okay. ag, ag grow. Vertical, uh, vertical grow down in Detroit on Lafayette up the street. Okay. Uh, so selling salads, selling water, oxygen, mental health. So we got therapists, psychiatrists on site. IV, IV drip therapy up there treatment. So just health and wellness outlet away from all this bull crap going on in society. Get your mental health right. Get your stomach right, and go have fun with life. That's huge right now, man. That's huge that right now. You, man. Right. Nah. That's crazy, <laughs> man. U of M education paying off. I see, man. So I know he <laughs> nah, it's going essentials, to essentials, baby. Man. Essentials, baby. Yeah, that's essentials too, man. So when when did you get that first offer, man? Who did it come from? Uh my first <laughs> offer. Who was my first offer? It was supposed to be Toledo, but they didn't offer me. Offer you. Bro, I swear. <laughs> they were supposed to offer me, but they didn't offer me. Uh, Reggie wins. I had to ask Reggie. I forgot who my first offer was. But then I had, after I got my first offer, I messed around and found out that I had Texas A&M offer I ain't even know about. Mm -hmm. So it was just, after that, then I kept going up to state. State had had me an offer. And then Michigan had offered me. Oregon was offering me. Uh, I was getting West Coast. I was getting Colorado. I had Colorado. I had a whole bunch, but it was Bowling Green, Toledo, they was fighting, and then Toledo was like, nah, you too good for us to come tight because I was playing basketball. Right. And then after we won the state championship, that's where all of my attention came. So then I went to a camp over in New Jersey, and then after all my offers started coming after that. Okay, so who's the best player you played against in high school? I just had to give it to J.D. just, uh, just to give it to him because we ain't really – we had, like, it was so much of a threat on our offense. It was, we couldn't really scheme it again. But I had, me and J.D., we had some nice battles, and we took it to college, too. Okay. So you was ranked as a top five tight end, you know what I'm saying, coming mm -hmm. out of high school. What made you choose Michigan? My grandma. My grandma made me go there. I love my grandma. And my sister was going there, so she said it made sense. Oregon was too far. So I was just like, all right. It, it ended up working out for me in the end, so I oh, appreciate it. Definitely it. worked out. Yeah, definitely worked out. I'm, you know, I know they they list you as a tight end sometimes or speak you that way. But when I watched the film, <laughs> especially back then, okay, Waller and all them doing that now. But back then, you didn't. I never saw you with your hand in the dirt. You nah. know what I mean? Like, and you was rotting cats up. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, I mean, I was. See that? Like, I'm stubborn. You know what I'm saying? I was that position that they are trying to do right now in the league. You know, the Jimmy Graham situation and all that. But I just didn't want to do it. I had felt as if I ain't want to live in my big cousin's shadow, Antonio Gates. 
and I wanted to be a wide receiver. So it was just like, I'm a ball player anyway. I came from the court, so it didn't matter what y'all put me. I play defense too. I play DB. So it was just, it didn't matter. I wanted to go score touchdowns. So putting the hand in the dirt, you know, if I had to do that to hide myself from the from the defense, that's cool too. Right. It was whatever. But uh, so did you go to Michigan like earlier? Or did you just go up there in the fall? Nah, in the fall, hey, bro. I love to have fun, man. <laughs> so I was about to go to school, so it was cool though. It was fun. Do you remember what y'all uh, conditioning test was going to that training camp that uh, freshman year? Heck yeah. What that was like? It wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> hey. I don't think that hey. was nobody, man. That nah, was it wasn't shot. me. Hey, that joke was funny. We had first got there, bro. They had tried to. Oh, they ain't even try. They did. I done messed around. So we had six stations. Only made it through four. Asthma attack. I told them. I say, this was in the summer condition. And I say, look, man, I just left high school, bro. Y'all are tripping. Like, we came here to play football and not get in shape. You feel me? I said this. Then after that, we went to camp, bro. We yeah, had to did our little 20 gasters. Passed that mud. I'm just well, shaking no. my head because it will be receivers say that. <laughs> and none of the rest of us say no no type, none of that like that. You know what I mean? <laughs> man, them 110 tests, bro, them 300s and all that. I couldn't, man. Only one I saw cuss out of coach, man, because he was tired of it was a receiver. He yeah. was a senior. We had fun. That that he conditioning said, test used to be tough, man. I ain't gonna lie to you. Hey, dog just said I can't hear him play football. I ain't come here to get <laughs> shot. You sound like T.O. or something, bro. Uh, <laughs> real <laughs> true story, bro. Y'all gotta, bro. Y'all gotta ask my people, bro. True story, bro. I believe class. That's crazy, man. So you had to be a dog talking like that because you came in playing early. It had been 15 years since a, a tight end at Michigan had over 100 yards. Uh huh. So how were you able to do that? How did you get on the field early? True story. Cheating the, the, the true story. Test. Yeah. Yeah. True story. Yeah. I had a package. We our first game was in Dallas, Texas versus Alabama. The kickoff vibe. I had a package. Like it was like seven to like 15 plays. I ain't even played a game but like four plays. Right? Went up to the coach and the offensive coordinator and we got back to Michigan. I say, I'm about to transfer. Like my boy over at Howard, it's a ratio over there. I'm gonna get drafted regardless. <laughs> we play Air Force that next week, four for one twenty six in the tub. <laughs> That's how I got it on the field. No, yeah, you switched it up real quick. Yeah, they they uh, you got to put that pressure on them, just like you feel me. Get that respect. That's what I had to go do. You know, not necessarily saying it like that, but it was. I respect my coaches, my offers, but it was Brady Hope. They. They didn't understand, like, the talent that we had at the school. Because if you go back and look at that next year, when Coach Harbaugh come in, them boys go crazy. Mm -hmm. And that's the same talent that I got came in with. So it was just to a level where they didn't understand the talent we had all through and through. And it was just demand what you want. Man, you know how I feel about them Rich Ryan Brady Hulk days. You know I, was, I, I was waiting as soon as he said it, I knew it. Brady Hulk and Rich Ryan and Adidas. Get all of that out of here, man. I know you happy about where Harbaugh at now, because them days I was like, we just might as well forget. Man. Because the crazy part is y'all had a whole lot of talent. Cats was going, still going to the league. Still yeah, going high. Crazy. Still going. Just Get beat win. by Army, it was still about how many cats just uh, straight. You know what I mean? I For just real. couldn't understand. And it was just, we had a whole bunch of nice guys. Yeah, I could tell you know, that too. Shout out to Chris Bryant. He up there doing his due diligence. He's mm -hmm. from Chicago. I played with him up there. He player development. So he taking care of the city and the kids all all around the country. So yeah. that's where the change come from. So you clearly had the talent to come in playing as a freshman. But we know it's like a strip difference. So what was your welcome to the NCAA moment? We played Purdue, actually. We played down in Purdue, man. Denard threw me over the middle. I got smacked. I caught the ball, I got smacked, but it was like this big boy football. Like mm -hmm. it was on like, you know, a basic route off a little 12, 10 yard, 10 to 12 yard little dig route at the tight end position. 
And the safety came down and smacked me against Purdue. But it was cool, you know what I'm saying? That it, it, You know how it is. You get that one experience, I ain't going to get got again. I promise you. <laughs> That's that's just what happened, you know what I'm saying? He got me, you know what I'm saying? But it was cool after that. Sophomore year, you was Big Ten tight end of the year. You remember mm. your best game that year? Uh, I, I mean, I had a couple fun games, but the Penn State, the Penn State game, that was that was my best game to me in my eyes. Uh, everybody remember me from the Ohio State game, but the Penn State, I had seven for like uh, I think it was. 151-149, set them boys up, two tugs, shut them boys up a couple times. We ended up losing, but it was the fact that I got to set up 106,000 people, so that was a little vibe up there, three overtimes. When, when was the moment you got up out of that 87, got into that one, and how did that happen? Because I know it's a big thing in Michigan. Like, yeah, man. Man, so – Oh, uh, honesty, you know, they was on some real big tradition stuff up there. That's why I had to wear 87. But it was cool, you know, got to respect the Kramer family. I wanted to switch to five, but it was just, like, to the point to where we respect them people. So I told them going in, like, I kept 87 and had my name, you know what I'm saying, on something to play the tight end position. Then moving to, like, that last year, I was just telling them, like, look, coach, I want to slug what I got to do. Told me what I had to do, you know, do my research, get educated on who wore it. And then put in real work, got to do it. And then uh, my people from North Carolina, so we had played App State that first week. So I'm like, all right, y'all got it. So the media, the news, and my family was just talking all that trash. So how I told them to set it up was we'll just do it at the game and don't show nobody in camp because I had already got it before camp. So just at the game – just told him, just have it in the locker room. It was my first time ever. Like, I had to do a little secret, like, photo shoot, you know what I'm saying, for all of the stuff. But after we seen it in the first game, I'm talking about J.D. seen it. I remember J.D. seen it. I seen it. Blake County seen it. After that, bro, it was the slug. What you did? Ain't nobody wore that bug. I went for three tugs. My family from North Carolina was up. I went for three tugs. Just have fun, bro. It was the one. Did Bray have to come down and holler? You had to holler at Bray because I know he had to holler at David Terrell or something like nah, that. Nah, I, uh, I did all of the – I did all – so I talked to uh, Perry, OG Perry. He cool with AC, Anthony Carter. So yeah, I did yeah, it that, yeah. that way. I did – I not necessarily was a paper, but it was to a point to where I broke down each of what they meant in a specific time type. Mm. Yeah, that make you respect it more than me, man. Everybody getting on my head, I'll be saying – you got to earn a number of somebody legendary word before. It don't be no shade to the next person, but, like, it's just respect. somebody put that number up there like that, you can't just go grab that number just because mm -hmm. you cold. There's got to be some kind of, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's like somebody going to Philly right now and being like, I'm just going to wear number three. And you not like AI. You ain't deal with AI. Did. Like, you got to. Put it in them. You got to put that work in. Put that hard hat on for real. Yeah. Yeah, man. So who was the best player you played against when you was at Michigan? I just had to say I keep it Big Ten. I had to say I keep it Roby and then Will Likely. So Brad, Bradley Roby. Okay. Ohio yeah, State yeah, and then yeah, Will right. Likely. Will Likely was over at um at Maryland. He was decent. He ain't the tallest, but he got he got heart. You mm. feel me? And he stayed scrappy and was getting it in the whole time. So I had to respect him. But then, like, as far as on the team, J.D., J.D. was the guy. J.D. had the gift. Obviously, we see what he's doing still to this day. Still to this so, day. Man, so who was your hype man in the locker room at Michigan? We had uh, Frank Clark. <laughs> Frank Clark, bro. He used to do the nitty shuffle, bro. <laughs> bro. Frank Clark, bro, he set the tone, bro, for every game. We had Thomas Ross. We had uh, Dennis Norfleet. Chris Bryant, he got us right. You feel me? After he got hurt, so big, we had some pieces, bro, that just kept us right, bro. Stayed on that, stayed on us. Yeah, Frank, Frank still in too. Frank man. getting it. Frank the he number one. He just got one. picked up by who? Nah, I don't so know. I don't he even know if he got every year. Nah, he, nah, nah, he the bro. number one sack leader, bro, in the NFL, in the, 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 the postseason. Yeah, I'm not. I'm saying he ain't with the Chiefs though no more. Nah, he ain't with the Chiefs. I don't know. He just got picked up. Yeah, he got picked up by somebody right away. He wasn't like no. 
Yeah. I had to see. I ain't been in the mix like that. So did you have like a, a funny pregame speech or like a best pre- pregame speech you got from a player or a coach that you can remember? Nah, bro. I mean, they were some pep talk guys, though. They were some pep talk guys. I was, I, I kind of zoned out during those times. You feel me? Like, it was always a message, but it wasn't for me type. So I really don't. David Goggins came talk to us type. David you know? Goggins came? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. He was doing all that same stuff. He yeah, was doing bro, Joe he, was, yeah, that. he was tripping. He was <laughs> tripping. You feel me? So we had like all the military people and all that type stuff come to us, like the Navy SEALs and those crazy people. Like we didn't have hey man, David all of Goggins these. Goggins is yeah. funny, bro. Yeah, he the really stuff liked he that. Be saying, he been saying that since 2013, bro. Man, dog talk about he went and did triathlon and did leg day before that. It was like, I was going to die. Then I said, yeah. bro, that was just stupid. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, for real? Like, <laughs> no disrespect that. to him, bro. I mean, you got it, bro. People go listen to him. Go do your thing, bro. <laughs> I, I, that's not smart, though. Not smart. That's not smart, bro. You got to event the next day, bro. I, oh. He said all this stuff to us, bro. I'm like, bro, it's either you like got hella willpower or you just stupid. No man, disrespect, He on man. some major pain type. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was crazy. So I guess you could say David Goggins, bro, he's the craziest dude to ever talk to us. Man, <laughs> David Goggins had me, had me fired the first time I heard him just on some YouTube, just – but then I started listening to what he was saying. I'm like, that, ain't that's no stupid. way. Like, yeah. that's not smart. He had us doing crazy pull ups, bro. I know you probably heard the story. He was doing like crazy pull ups. Yeah. Bro, our so strength coaches. Like pull up bro, our strength coaches, bro. They made us do the pull up stuff with him, bro. <laughs> I'm in there like, bro, y'all don't let him brainwash you, gang. Like, bro, had us on command pull ups, bro. I'm like, he did it. Man, that ain't <laughs> us, bro. We not going to war. We going to play football. I swear to God, man. I, the only reason that my strength and conditioning coach at BG, Coach Hillman, I believe he co-wrote the muscle failure book with the strength and conditioning coach at Notre Dame back in the seventies with Lou Holt. So everything we did was muscle failure. Nice to call my homeboys every other school what y'all at do the it? big. All my what friends is at it? Florida that. At Michigan, at USC, all this, they're like, bro, we don't do nothing like that, bro. We and this boy doing speed training and, you know, lifting, but we ain't doing what you talking about doing. You, bro, they got you out there in the cold, pushing cars and sleds around the stadium. He they had bro. us doing that at Michigan, bro, in the snow. <laughs> Aaron Wellman, gang, outside, bro. Bro, I swear to God, I'm like, bro, this is. We not soldiers, gang. We football man. players. The people used to ask, you want to coach? I said, hell no, I don't want to coach, man. <laughs> oh, but I want to do that. I mean, we, uh, how Heart we want to get today? bro. We was, Heart cap- con- we was capping on one of our coaches. Like, bro, when the last time you seen your wife, bro? Go bro, home, bro. For real? Like, that's why you tripping on us, bro. Go home, bro. <laughs> I promise you. Get some of that anger out, boy. <laughs> you go get your issue, man. Go home, bro. <laughs> man, that's crazy, man. After a good junior season, man, you entered the draft. What was your best game that junior year? And what went into the decision to enter the draft early? My best game, I'm going to just say the first game. I like the first game versus App State just because it was so personal between my family and all that. But I entered the draft because I told everybody when I first got to school I was only staying for three years. So that's why I left. Yeah, they knew that. You you know a three and out when they come in. Yeah. <laughs> no, I told them. I literally told them, OG. No, nah, I said, like, I'm only staying here. But I told everybody on the team and the coaches, I'm only staying here for three years. Man, so you got drafted in the second round uh, by the Panthers. Uh, where were you at, like, when you got drafted? And You know what I'm saying? How was you feeling when it happened? The first night, we had a little party up in Ann Arbor because I wanted all of the teammates and everybody to be there. And then uh, after I didn't get drafted the first night, the second night, we had it at my uh, my mama house. So I had all the, everybody in the neighborhood come. Well, not the neighborhood, the family from the neighborhood and everybody mm-hmm. else come out to Farmington. We had a uh, nice little crab legs and all that type vibe at the crib. It was cool, you know what I'm saying? Like, it didn't matter to me. I just wanted to go to the league, you feel me, and play. Go get me a Super Bowl. So I got blessed going into my rookie year, into the situation that I got got to win into. How was that the, first year? Huh? I was that first year. I Man, was, was that rookie season. It was crazy. So it was getting drafted to North Carolina. 
you know what I'm saying, being two two hours away from my family. So that was like a plus. I always had my, my auntie, uh, my aunt Peggy, Peach Cobbler. So I was blessed to have that one. But then at 15 and one, it felt like it was a Harrison again. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Got off the bus and you already knew it was 21-0. So the vibe and the, and the, the, the swag that we just had, you know, Cam brought everybody from Atlanta up to to uh, Charlotte, a little two three hour drive. Uh, it was just lit, bro. The city was lit like it was. You couldn't turn down. We ain't, we ain't lose. You feel me? To week fourteen, you feel me? Week thirteen, week fourteen, we lost. Yeah, y'all was lit that year for sure. No. I was full. Of everything was popping. People don't know Charlotte, low key a lit city. Like oh, yeah. you know, what I mean, people don't know that about Charlotte. Like the what's the uh, CIA Uptown CIAA CIAA C-I- that's for all the HBCUs, my Ooh, boy. Oh God, my boy. <laughs> <laughs> Lord, huh? that's the one. You know, sure. Everybody, you know, everybody like from the A from to the HBCUs. Everybody just go to Charlotte. So we we basically was building up a small town. So it was like a it was a country country city. Then now it's the number two banking city in America. I mean, yeah, in America. And then it's like a, a little mini Atlanta, like Dallas vibe right now. Yeah, because I know a lot of people, um, especially when the egg got overpopulated, and everybody got tired of all just moving today. It was like Carolina, Houston, and Nashville. By the time Nashville and Carolina was really blowing up, the field yeah. was going crazy too. Mm-hmm. And then, I mean, but more about that team. It was funny watching that team with y'all. Y'all look like a hoop squad, for real. Like y'all receiving core and everything. You know what I mean? Cam 6'5", you 6'4", mm-hmm. Kelvin Benjamin 6', whatever he is, 6'6". Six, six. Mm-hmm. Y'all still got Greg Olson, old bud, out there. You know what I mean? Yeah. Y'all had another tight end. What was his name, number 84? Ed, Ed Dixon. Yeah, Ed Dixon. Uh-huh. Big giant. Like, I'm like, dog, I couldn't imagine being a DB would see y'all walk out. Like, oh, I got a long day, man. I got a long day. It was fun, man. It was fun. They had built, they built something over there. I was different. You feel me? The rest of the league wasn't doing it, and then the offense scheme was 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 smooth too. So it was just have fun, you know, play fast and see if they can keep up. We we come out there off the quick offense and how we played it. So it was just we had two speed demons with Ted Ginn and Philly Brown. Sure did have two. And Ted then we had Ginn. third down specialist Jericho Cotry. You feel me? So we just have fun. Ted Ginn. Jericho Cotry. Ever, man. Uh-huh. Ted, his speed crazy. It was crazy. 14-year career. Yeah, so. Running the foe, too. Who was your vet, man, your rookie year, man, or in that locker room, man? Like, were you, did they, like, help you a lot, or were you uh-huh. just kind of tossed into the fire? Man? Nah, hey, so I got, it was both, but I had, I got blessed. I had Jericho Cotry, Ricky Pro. He played 17 years. Yeah, Ricky Pro. Greatest show on turf. But that was my coach. Yeah, that was my coach. And then I had uh, Ted again, so you know I got three of my three of the coldest OGs, you know, to give me all different perspectives. Ricky played seventeen the longest, you know what I'm saying, and he played at the highest level and going to the Super Bowl. So he just he still can play to this day. So he just he's breaking the routes down, see how we should get off uh, the press, top of the route, all that. So I was vibing this self, Cotry, third down specialist. Anything that you needed to know about that, down the distance and all that, that's cool. And then Ted, he showed you the different speed changes that you got to do when you're taking the top off and the little intricate route. So I got blessed, bro. I ain't going to hold you up. Yeah, that's – um. I always notice that with cats who have a very long career in the league. They zero in on one thing, come a specialist at it. Playbook, they pick up real fast. Offense, they pick up real fast. They know what the team need from them. And they can always count them to get that 10 times out of 10. That'd be the cats who been in the league 15, 16 years, something mm-hmm. crazy like that. You know what I mean? You had some great people to learn from. Heck, yeah. It was fun. Then yeah. you had some cats on the team you got some fun with, too. I know yeah. y'all had some. Nah, yeah. <laughs> had fun, man. Charlotte was lit. You, you know what I'm saying? Like, the GM upstairs did a great job, you know, having a whole bunch of older vets, you know, 10 years in and then – Mix of the young guys, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. The rookies to the three, four year in, he, they had a, did a great job at that. That's why we were so successful. So it's that junk was a vibe over there. 
No, Steve Smith wasn't there when you got there. Nah, was, he wasn't there. He was already gone? Yeah, he was uh, gone. He was gone. They said he was gone. They said we would have bump heads. We would have clashed. <laughs> that would have been a good thing, though. Personality. Nah, it was different. Man, you, get the, you get the fair one off, and then y'all be cool after that. <laughs> it you know how fun. that go, man. You nah, can beat you somebody know, like know. you, y'all got to nah, get into saying, it. You got to see who the one. Yeah. got to see who the one. <laughs> it would have been fun. You <laughs> <laughs> made a lot of impactful plays your rookie season, man. So let's talk about that first touchdown. Uh, what route did you have? Uh-huh. You, you know, you catching on somebody, you more somebody. Who nah, felt like, how sorry. did it feel getting it? The first tug, it was against Green Bay, ironically. And, um... It was uh, I had like a what we call it. I don't even know what you call it, like a post route. I had a deep post at like a four, four, fourth on the outside, mm-hmm. but it was zero. So I read it, checked it with Cam, made sure we connected eyes. Then I ran like a dark slant. After that, it was all she wrote. Scored a tug. Uh, had um, Randall on my back. He was. He went to uh, Arizona State. We came the same draft. Had him on my back, and then from there I just start going crazier. You ended that season on a high note. That rookie season, man. You uh, got a game winning touchdown or a key touchdown on Rogers Cromarty and the Giants. Uh-huh. And you followed it up with a big game against the Bucks. Yeah. Anything you remember about those games, man? Nah. So what was funny was I was playing like uh, I was playing like the six man type. In the uh, New York game, bro, I was cold in the mud. It was the first time we had went up north because uh, we was playing down south, NFC South. December, bro, playing it was cold. One of the fire things that went out tight. And they had me run like a little little out route. And I had Prince of Michael Moore on me, bro. He had sat on me. I'm like, bro, it's too cold to be trying to just – Y'all niggas trying to come to me. Y'all trying to come to me on this on this route, on this play, bro. My legs ain't warm yet, you know? So he he, he kind of strapped me. Cromarty get out there hollering, bro. I'm like, hold on, OG. Which which OG is you? You got two names, right? It's Rogers Cromarty. I'm about to do you. That's what I told you. <laughs> I'm about to go this way and go that way. I promise y'all. That was what the tug was. I went this way and that way. Scored the tug on him. He was hollering, so I had to humble him. And had then, to humble him, huh? Then going against the the Bucks, my Ted ain't want to play. He was arguing, complaining about his pinky toe, mm. right? I'm like, you gonna let me start? I'm about to go crazy at the X because I was playing the Z. Seven for one, seven for one, twenty in the tug going against Jameis. That was my that was the big that was the big splash after we lost against Atlanta. And they put all the pressure on me. I had, bro, crazy. Took an IV before the game. Messed my heart up. Dang. Dang near like it was an air bubble. So it messed up. It was like, bro, I dang near like it was almost passed out. <laughs> How you get an air bubble from an IV? Because they messed it up. Oh, and, and travel. They traveled. Oh. So it was almost didn't play. So Ted almost had to suit up. He's like, man, my pinky toe, my pinky toe. So my what's my toilet? <laughs> hey, I swear to God, bro. <laughs> my pinky toe. So I had to go. I had to mess around, bro. Tighten up real quick. You know what I'm saying? Went out there. I had fumbled. I was messed up in the beginning of the game, trying to get my head back, my space back. Fumbled in the beginning of the game, but then ended up with the 7 and 120. So that, that was some good games. Man, you seem to have fun with the game, man. I need, I need some funny locker room stories, some funny off the field stories. You know, everybody, you know, all the cats, you know, okay, we've we been through all the, uh-huh. you know what I mean? We, we talk to the younger kids a little different. They about to go through it. Right. We already done, done all that. All you know, that. Yeah, who, who, yeah, I need a funny locker room story. What, what was the best locker room, though, you played in? Which team? The, the one with the most, like, it was the most together with Carolina. That's what we, I got so many memories with them because it was the most together. You know, all the other ones was just with them young kids and I wasn't going out type vibe. Right. So it was just 
I got too many stories. I really can't really tell him tell y'all like what the, what the buys was. I ain't I'm gonna hold y'all, man. man. It's too many. All of them stories is them stories, bro. With mm-hmm. one of the man. Who's the funniest cat on Carolina team? On the Carolina team? Yeah. You had to say Joe Webb. Joe Webb, he uh was a freak athlete out of UAB. Mm-hmm. Uh Alabama boy. He was uh he was one of the funniest. But I actually played with Lou Young. Shut up. Yeah, that was the that was the coldest. Oh, the comedian. Yes, that was the coldest DB I played in the league. I swear to God. <laughs> Man, hold on, Holy stop. girl, holy girl. Maryland, you, Lou Young. Yes, Georgia Tech. Yeah, with Georgia Tech. Yes. So he played with you at Carolina. In Carolina. Yes, he was on the Super Bowl team. All that. Hey, what cut his career short? What happened? Politics, yeah. situation, and circumstance. He was he was he was number two DB on our team. No cap. What do you play, safety or corner? Corner. He was the number two DB on the team, but they never played him. Wow. I swear to God. I mean, that's another thing about football. A lot of kids, I'm saying, they 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 gonna experience it. You're gonna see it. Man, I'm politics. It's crazy. Crazy dog. in the league. Crazy. If you did not get paid a certain amount of money, yeah. you ain't gonna play. That's just what it is, gang. That's what they got to know. No, nobody so tell like nobody. Was funny than the mug then with him. Oh, man, it was hilarious. Yeah, no, nah, like, up. bro, we had a dance battle, bro, <laughs> before every practice. We had a dance battle, bro. We had a dance, <laughs> bro. We had practice so lit in Carolina, bro. Like, it was crazy. Man, that had to go into y'all going to the Super Bowl, y'all rookie year. That's, why, so I, that's why it was like that. It was so close. So how was it? I mean, it's a blessing going to the Super Bowl. You went your rookie year, so you got to be like, bet I got a chance." You know, what I'm it was so easy. How was that? You know, what I'm saying the whole Super Bowl, the Super Bowl week. That that was a little stressful. It was too many cameras, too much extra stuff that wasn't football. You feel me? Like having extra interviews for no reason. You know, just for to, for them to make their dollars. You yeah. feel me? Because it's mandatory at that point. Y'all got to go do it. You got to do it. That Marshawn Lynch <laughs> stuff, that was that week. Here so I don't get fired. You feel me? Yeah. And it was to a point to where we were so lit, we wasn't used to like that and to keep that same energy up. Like Peyton Manning, he been there before. You yeah. feel me? So they was already understanding that week and all that. So that was cool, though, but – it was that was the latest year in football in my life. Man, you look back, it do be that one year to stick out above all the rest. Yeah, of I mean, you got I got my state championship year because I only lost I only lost two games in high school. And y'all was tough at Harrison. Yeah, so it's just that junk was crazy. That one and then the Super Bowl year, it was the craziest years of my my life. <laughs> it's crazy. I can't believe you played with Lou Young. Though. That's just funny because uh, I be watching him on. On the ground, though, I could just imagine him in the locker room. Like, what them cats? You be in a serious meeting with coach, and he over there in the corner, just oh man, <laughs> bruh. You gotta understand, trouble. like I was the clown too. You feel me? Yeah. So anything I, anything that came to my head, I'm just saying it, saying it to the coach. We got a coach. See, like when he being the coach, he was being one of our coaches. I used to hit him with the stay green, stay green. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? He coach he coach Wilkes. Coach Wilkes thought he was Denzel Washington. <laughs> I swear to God. I swear to God, bro. <laughs> thought he was Denzel. He was the head coach for a time. He was the interim coach. So him and Lou had a tight little relationship. So it was just bro, all the Lou stuff, bro, like it's all coming from that whole Carolina experience. From them years. I, yeah. I know y'all training camp probably was – Oh, lit. Oh, my God. It I can't lit. imagine. Have all the rookies got to do their thing and you oh, know, yeah. all that. Man, they booed me, bro. I had – bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I need that story. <laughs> bro. Hey, man. Bro. Oh, what did you have to do, number I, one, first? Sing, bro. Sing, what you saying? Bro, I got booed <laughs> six times, bro. <laughs> Six times, bro. I got six booed times. six times. They ain't, I could never finish. They Ooh. did it on purpose. What you was supposed to say? Any any song. I, I got sunshine. Boom. <laughs> I time out, bro. I couldn't get it out, bro. You know, you know, that wasn't me. You feel me? You know. So I'm over there singing. I can really sing for real. But I look at this. Look. <laughs> ah, it's all like that. This how I was, bro. All right, I'm about to go. They're like, go, oh, Funch. All right, slide. I start singing. Doom, 
I'm vibing everybody, you know, in there. You know, I had to usher. As soon as you know, 7 o'clock on the dot in my drop top. You feel me? Mm -hmm. Ted, boo! I'm like, bro, then after that, everybody boo because I played so much against everybody with everybody. So it was just, I just had to go out six times, bro. Coach Rivera said I'm good. So I was like, we straight. Yeah, I had to buy a lot of food for everybody, though. So that was cool. Y'all was one of them teams should have been on hard knocks. We should have. Yeah, I swear to God. That's what it sound like. I swear to God, they just never did it. Sound like y'all should have been on hard knocks. You would have had some old Chad Ocho Cinco kiss the baby type oh, moment. That's what I was that. on. I swear to God. They messed it up. See, bro, we would have had classics, bro. I smacked, bro. I what? cheese neck one of the coaches, bro. He was, what? Bro. <laughs> bro. Bro, I was a rookie, bro. Swear to God, rookie Orioles is my second year in the league, bro. It was, uh, bro, it was the receiver. Y'all know him, bro, from Alabama, bro, number four. Back in the day. Oh, uh, my man, is short. he was short, fast heart, cat. Heart, the heart throw or something like, something like that. Bro, he was cold. Yeah. He was cold. Bro, it was, bro, he just had got a ball fade. <laughs> hey. Oh, hey. I know y'all killed him. Oh, bro, bro, about. we in camp after the first week. Bro, just got a ball fade. I'm like, bro, y'all see this fool? Why he do that, bro? He know I play too much, bro. Look at my hand now, nah, bro. <laughs> totally bro I swear up. to God, bro. I hit him so hard. I thought I was I, I thought I was about to get him fired. I say <laughs> As soon as I did it, I say, no, it was so loud. It was so, bro, he couldn't do nothing to me. I was the money man. Ooh. Bro, he had to, bro, he had so much pride. Like, he had to just hold that day. I was like, bro, you were real. Oh, no, he wanted to shoot the fair one with to, you. Bro, he <laughs> to go. I knew it. I wanted to scrap. I just had to, I had to at that point, but I couldn't because he was just an interim coach. Yeah. It was bad. Cause he wasn't too much older than he us. He wasn't too much real. older than me. Yeah, yeah, he wasn't too much older than me. So it was just like he, he was, he was laughing like oh, that. He, had to he eat, laughing man. with me he too much. Like, <laughs> hey, he was the coach, but he was laughing with me too much. He got too comfy, bro. Yeah, that was the other laugh. <laughs> hey, uh, 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 his face was a hey, straight red. I say, ooh, he want to whoop my. And he was an NFL GA. He couldn't do nothing. He couldn't do nothing. <laughs> that was a moment of faith. Hey, moment of faith right there. Moment of truth. What oh, you going to do? <laughs> oh, man. See, this is what I miss about playing football. It be this. Yeah. Yeah. It be locker room capping, you know, all that. I swear. That's what I miss, too. I'm doing all this business type, man. I miss laughing and capping on them boys in the locker room, coaches and stuff. Like that for sure. So you had the opportunity to play for a few different teams over the league, man. Who all did you play for, and what was your best season of your career? You think? Uh, I played Carolina. Played with Indy, Green Bay, San Fran for a little second, and then uh, Detroit. My favorite, I mean, my best season, the one I liked the most, I learned the most type stuff about me was the. Uh, 2017 season, I almost touched a band that year, but it was just holding my tongue in certain situations and battling through what I was battling on the field type vibes. It was to the, I don't even know how I did what I did, but everybody was, we was vibed out. My house was a spot. So it was just like, that's when I had to build the camaraderie myself. Everybody started bobbing and coming to the crib and stuff. So that 2017 year was pretty lit. That was when I was fantasy football, all that type of vibe for everybody. What made the decision to choose the Colts, though? Because you didn't get traded. You signed there. No, nah, yeah. So I signed with the Colts. So I had between the, the Colts and Buffalo. And it was a two-year deal with, the, uh, with Buffalo and a one-year deal with the Colts. So it was 10 – 10 million for the Colts, and it was 21, 17 in the first with Buffalo. I was like, shoot, I get back to the table, and they got a top top three, top five defense. Andrew Luck, he top five, top three quarterback. We about to go to the Super Bowl. I have a meeting with them, you know, talk to their people and all that. He told me he was going to play, so I signed with them boys. That was the year he – That was the year he retired. Oh. Fourth quarter, preseason. 
Third preseason game, retired. Six minutes left. That's tough. Somebody That's came tough. down in the stands. They say, hey, is it true? Andrew Lux retiring? I had to look back like, ain't no way he just said that. Not after what they told me. Yeah. That was the finesse. It's a business. Yeah, yeah that was, was the coming. finesse. Yeah, yeah. That was the finesse. They knew. They got to keep so. somebody in there to sell them tickets. You know. Yeah. So it was, that's what. That's why that year, and I had got hurt the first game of the season. Cracked my collarbone with Jacoby Brissett. Mm. Just like trials and tribulations. What court made you play with in San Francisco? I didn't get to play. It was it was a situation to where it was the coaches and everything wasn't it wasn't everything wasn't clicking. Jimmy Garoppolo was up there, but they got they had Lance up there. Lance to me was the better quarterback. I didn't practice with them boys. Oh really? For a week and a half. You're about the first so, person I ever heard say that. So it was to a point that's what I shoot from from Trey Lance to Jimmy G. Jimmy G is I'll be real, systematic quarterback. Alex Smith. You feel me? Not even. Alex Smith can move around. Not eating, yeah. Alex yeah, Smith yeah. had them wheels. He had feet. Yeah, yeah feet. Feel me? Feet and heart. And Jimmy G, model guy. You feel me? Looks the part. You feel me? Fake <laughs> top You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> it's just. He, Doing the he, <laughs> he got that. You know what I'm saying? So it's just now is, you know, Trey Lance, he's a guy that's. Gonna give a wide receiver opportunities. Everybody like they want a quarterback to play the game for them. A wide receiver want opportunities. Right. You feel me? So it's just especially while you play it, cause it's like if it's just in your radius, you coming down with it. So I don't need to like be super locked into your system tight receiver. None of that. Just give me the rock. Throw the ball up. That's it. But nobody could figure it out. That's why it was trials and tribulations. I go hoop. Y'all good. Nobody can figure it out. I can figure it out for myself. You pay attention to uh, Michigan High School football right now? Man, some of them talented. It's some real talented kid. I watched uh, Belleville got some kids. We got a quarterback. Cass got a number one that do everything. Mr. Everything. West Bloomfield got some guys. So that's what I've been locked on. I don't really know too much more. I was living in Florida. I know all they circuit down there. But I I have seen them kids who were, uh, that I talked about. Talent crazy here. They can like, go. it's some kids at Cass, basketball and football. Like, all this ridiculous, like, because this is what we always should have had is the exposure because it's always been there. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, like, people like y'all and other groups, like, just keep – Keep doing y'all thing, like getting these kids out here because everybody in the country need to know who the coldest athletes is. Yeah, that's wild because nowadays, I mean, when we was young, you could, it was schools that I could never understand for life of me why they coach wasn't promoting these kids. It mm -hmm. was like, I always tell this story with my old dude and Marlon Burt. Like, Burt was, like, one of the coldest high school players I ever played. He was at Groves back in the day. Like, Burt was giving city schools problems from Groves. Mm -hmm. He giving King, whoever they play, problems on the field and on the court. Mm -hmm. Penn State, Michigan State, everybody wanted Burt. My old dude, uh, Penn State and Michigan State came over to see – like Omari and some other dudes. And I'm in middle school at the time. I'm just hanging out in the coach's office. He like, Coach, any other players that you think I should go check out while I'm around here? He like, man, go on across the street, go see that kid, man. They got some ball players over there. But that one right there, he liked the kids I had at Pershing. Like, he, mm -hmm. he liked that. Coach go over there and come back. I think it was Maryland, Penn State, and Michigan State, and somebody else. It was like, when the coach said he wasn't a D1 player. Duh, 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 all this type, all that type of. It be like that. I never understood I why a high school that. coach would clip a kid's wing. We bro. had that. We had that. that at Harrison High School. Y'all did too. Bro. I know that. <laughs> Look, the program, I'm, bro. It's yeah. the program. It's Aaron Burbridge, bro. Like the coaches over there, bro. He should have been. He should have been at Bama. He should have been. He should have been everywhere. That boy was booby, but it's they going to pick and choose what they do, what they want to say, what they want to pull, what strings and all this, you feel me? And it just, that's why it's good at the city up. Yeah, because see, me? now with this, you can't deny what, you feel what, what's me? going on right here. We're going to play the talent. We're going to talk about the talent because mm. at the end of the day, we want to see our kids 
grow in and get exposure. You are what you what you are. Like you you are what you hang around. You're a product of your environment. So all these collegiate ca- campuses is better environment for the kids in the city to get out of what they used to. You feel me? So it's the coaches understand that in the city and they gonna push that now. Mm-hmm. All you gotta do is keep balling. Make the NCAA clearinghouse. That's it. Like, don't be messing up them grades. Stay out of trouble. And you going to go because all these cameras is up and they going to see you. They're going to see you on YouTube. They're going to see you on Instagram. They're going to see you on Twitter. Like, you all getting a max exposure. Back in the day, some, I seen some kids get scholarships off 7-on-7. Seven seven. We go to camp and somebody get a one-handed yep. OBJ type grab. Oh, coach is like, oh, yeah, who's that? Yeah, let me get him right now. But – that little offer that, w- that may have been from, like, Akron or something like that, where that kid might have been way more talented. No one saw that catch except for people that was there. Mm-hmm. So now all this is on film. Y'all kids, you know, y'all get exposure from everywhere. They There's blessed. no limit to where y'all can go. They blessed, nah. They blessed. It's, it's lovely, too, because it's like. Yeah, I'm happy we, for them. Nah, we got to give our knowledge to them because it's like we done been through so many experiences. It's like this is how you supposed to act. This is how you not supposed to act. And then from there, change your family life. Yeah, that's what it's about, because we're bringing the good and the bad. We'll tell you all the truth. You know what that's saying? it. If you got questions, come holler at us. We ain't going to hold you up, man. You know, we want to see you all do better. Free game. Basically, free game. Said, free game, man. So Be better up. than us. Basically. Yeah. For sure. For we sure. Def- definitely can show you where the, where the landmines at, where the pitfalls at. For sure. Thousands. If you could pick, you know, if you were starting a team, you could pick any of these three receivers, who would you pick and why? Jerry Rice. Randy Moss, T.O. Starting a team? Mm-hmm. I'm Your pick, guy. Who my guy? Randy Moss. You got to pick Randy Moss because he been through the most adversity-wise as far as the Notre Dame-Marshall situation. Understanding what it's like to have so much and then being at the bottom. The swag he brought to the game is the same as AI. He from yeah. the same place we all from, but he got it in. Shoot, this what it looked like when everything's sweet. This what it looked like when it ain't. And then it would just go crazy. That's a good way to look at it. I ain't never thought about it like that, man. You know, all the adversity, your game, football game be up and down, you know what I'm saying? That's Randy definitely – Randy definitely could have been one of them guys we all know that went to, like, J.C. or something because he got kicked out of whatever big school, and then we never heard of him from him again. Mm-hmm. I mean, we all play. How many cats we know that were like, we Thousand. know they was like that. Thousand. And went off to, had to go to, got kicked out of school for whatever reason, had to go to Kansas or J.C.'s and Kansas. J.C.'s mm-hmm. used to be where everybody used to go. Thousand percent. In California. But if mm-hmm. you don't make it back out of there, you get some it's trouble ball there. ball game. You back to the career. Back to the career. Back to the environment. Yep. That's it. So it was, that's why I say, you feel me, like, them other dude that came out of HBCU, you feel me? Like, yeah. They didn't have to get exposed to how to deal with a different culture, then go deal with some more different culture, and then make it out of that. Like y'all ever been to West Virginia? <laughs> yeah. Over there? Come on, man. Hey man, West V different. Come on, man. West V different, man. He made it up out. Good yeah. Me, so yeah. Him and White Chocolate, and then to hear them stories. I was listening to White Chocolate on uh, uh, Stack and and uh, mm-hmm. what's that podcast? He was just giving up gambling. Like, yeah, that's why they call him White Chocolate. The whole way he told that wasn't no act. Nah. <laughs> that wasn't no real, act. real spill. <laughs> yeah, that real wasn't spill. no act. West V's tough. You know, it's funny, though, like, with the HBCUs, I just always, always think about that, too. Because when Dion went to Jackson State, really showed what could be. And I remember uh, when I was leaving school, my little situation, you know, the coaches end up, uh, that's another thing. I'm, I'm glad that don't happen to kids today because I don't wish that on nobody. But, um... Is that paperwork game? I ain't know. I don't think none of us knew in nineteen eighteen that that contract is it's an option. It can either be a four year lock in or a one year renewal. That's yeah, they don't tell you. No one knew that, right? So when I wanted to leave, transfer, like, I don't have to let you go. Don't nobody tell you the AD have to let you go if you mm-hmm. formally write AD. But anyways, long story short, I was supposed to go over there with Vince over there in Norfolk. I remember at the time because when we was in school, it was the recession. 06, 07, 08, 09, mm-hmm. you come back to the crib, man. You just back on the block. There ain't nothing for you to do because there ain't no jobs, ain't no nothing, right? 
I just remember everybody from HBCUs was graduating on time, getting good jobs outside the football thing. Just they had a whole different setup. Setup. Cats coming up out of you know Michigan State or East or whatever else at that time they going work for Quicken Loans or go to Chrysler with a college degree. I'm like this don't even make no sense. <laughs> like at all, but it's just that different network. You know yeah, I mean? like that's where we all get it's choices at the end of the day. Yeah. Choices to. Go there and see how to vibe with your people more, right? Or go learn a different situation. And then by you going to Harrison, you already got that kind of. It was straight. Yeah, yeah. it was straight. Wasn't too hard to, you know, this transition. I mean, it was. It was still hard. Don't get it twisted because these the coaches we had, nah. Yeah. Let me San Diego State type people. So it wasn't to, it was to a point to where it was like, y'all don't even get that. This Michigan, bro. Type of stuff that y'all pulling and like it just yeah. Ann, Ann Arbor is different because yeah I don't think people understand that Ann Arbor is like it's Harvard Yale you know the Ivy Leagues yeah then it's Ann Arbor then Stanford Northwestern Michigan and UCLA like that is the crim the crim them kids are all Fortune five hundred kids telling you bro yeah, it's different competition bro yeah like gotta do your homework vibes is Treacherous. My man's a Curry brothers, Julius and Marcus, bro, man. Juju, both of them played up in Michigan, right? Yep. If you know they who their family is and all that, you know, they coming from that. But Juju told me one day he was on the practice squad for the Green Bay Packers. And Juju said he pulled up when he went and copped a Ferrari and pulled up. He said, Brett Farr looked at him like, how you got more than me? He was like, Juju told me he was flipping practice squad money with the rich kids from Michigan. Yeah. Like on some legit stuff. But he was turning hundred thousand into five. Yeah. Five into a meal. A meal yeah. into like just plays. Just this, staying connected. The network. With, that network. Bruh, that U of a million alumni. Oh yeah. And this this tap in Julius Curry, he up he in Idlewild. He got some stuff going on over there too. He got some racing stuff going on too. He's still doing the race car drive. Yeah. Man, he was on that early before Bubba Washington Came around all that. Mm -hmm. He tell me one day, he say, Steph, you want to be a NASCAR driver? What you, what you want, man? Like, because he was, he be like he be that. He be serious. Yeah, he be serious. serious. He be moving fast like that. Like, hey, bro, he's like, man, look, it's school in North Carolina. I can send you down there. You're going to come back up. Even if you lose, bro, we just make 50000 a race. Something he was telling me, he was talking fast. I'm like, I'm like, bro, what type of time you want? He be <laughs> on to get money. Get money. He man, got you motion. You chase that bag, dog. Man, he got motion. So who you think the best tight end and receiver in the league right now and why? Devontae Adams. He is a smaller version of myself. He uh he can't be touched. Like at the line. So it's just it's we twins at the at the end of the day, you know, my my situation and situation and circumstances. I sat off of COVID. I messed up some situations for a lot of people. That is what it is. Family over any piece of paper to me, but it's game wise, nobody better than Devontae. And that's that's my twin. So I can he stamped. Like it is what it is. And you can't you can't touch him, it is what it is, bro. He gonna win every day. You ever work out with him? Nah, I was up there with him. I don't need to. After the we was, I was Oh yeah, there. Green Bay. Yep, I was in camp. Oh with yeah, him. I forgot about that. Yep, so, yeah, I was in camp with him. I seen him in person. That's what I was with that was what the the tail of the tail was who was no different. Who was the in my eyes it was a, who was the real number seventeen. Okay. And I got up there, I my film speak for itself and the respect was given, you know what I'm saying? The hat was nodded and everything was copacetic. So it's we understand seventeen is one A, one B. A lot of good athletes in your family being from the city. Who the best athlete in the family? Me. <laughs> you, got, you got Tony O. Gates, you got Tony Harrison, you got me. And I think it's me. Every day of the week. I mean, I ain't did nothing, you know. Uh Tony O, he got a jacket, gold jacket. Uh Tony, he uh he wore the belt for a stint. And I just so happened to go play in the Super Bowl. That's my that's what I can say. Well, I'm about to go hoop 
they can't say they switch sports like ah, I'm about to switch sports. Tony O did, but it was on some collegiate. Now I'm about to go pro and pro. <laughs> so so I I think I'm I'm a hold I'm a hold the crown in the family. Oh man, Tony going pro in both. He did that. Yeah, nobody. So uh, he got the gold jacket. I give cuz that I give I give TJ the, the belt. You feel me? He was the most respected person in the world at what he did, you know, but I'm about to go play basketball professionally. I think I did two things on code. What position you gonna be playing on the court? On the court, the two. Okay, two guard. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What that basketball game like? Fun. Yeah. The basketball I can say. Shooter, you, you wanna go I'm to a shooter. Home. I'm a shooter. Everybody want me to be like a crazy athlete, bro. But it's I got everything. I got crazy defense. I can shoot the mess out the ball. I can dunk the ball. I have fun with it. I have fun. Say so shoot, huh? Okay. We gonna see. I wanna see it. Nah. I mean, <laughs> it's gonna be fun. I got to so I gotta play, um I gotta play in the TV. I'm I'm probably a play, I'm gonna play tomorrow with LJ. And then Thursday, it's a little money ball, um money ball pro am up mm-hmm. in Lansing. I'll go up there, hoop up there on Thursday, just so the city can see me hoop. And then I got to play in the TBT tournament on Taj Gibson team. So playing over in Syracuse, New York, on the 24th at uh, 7, 7 p.m. on ESPNU. So everybody can see me play then. Make sure you all tune in, man. Yeah, tune in. Check him out, man. There's a lot of good players from the city and Michigan in general right now in the league, man. Who you think will turn up the most this year? This year, I won't. I think so. It's going to be, bro, it's. It's hot right now. I ain't going to hold you, bro. I guess real hot. Like, all of them is real hungry right now. I want JD to have the best year coming off his injury. But Sauce, he up there about to go crazy because he got a cheat code at quarterback. But Tavier Thomas, bro, Black Magic, bro. He down in uh, Houston, bro. Number one slot. Number one nickel. You feel me? So... He might he might go the craziest shout out. He just got married yesterday. So shout out to Lil Cuz. Congratulations. Shout out to Lil Cuz. And and it's just bro, is I can't not say everybody's name, you feel me? But it's like we I can't bring everybody up. But them them three I think is in between those three. That's dope, man. I've been hearing a lot about black magic lately. He got a nice little buzz going. Oh yeah, nah, he the one. He the one. He had to get it out the the, the trenches for real out of all of us. We want to be honest. Like he had to take the fairest route. He been cold since we was little. So it was just it's amazing to see his story, bro. So how he went the fairest route, been thugging it, bro, doing the special teams, and then finally last year they just started letting me loose on the nickel corners type vibe. So it's even though he got hurt, he still you feel me. Out of that, coming back off that injury, and then him now being the number one nickel out of the whole league and coming from Ferris, coming from Detroit at that. You That's a me? fun position, man. At like, the, if you a scrappy kind of dude, especially it, just the position itself, playing nickel really fits the um, personality of a cat from Detroit. Because a nickel is fun, bro. You could drop in the coverage. You can rush, go sack that quarterback. You can go smack somebody. Easy. You could – Hiding that coverage, pop up, get you a pick. Like, it's a lot of things you can do right there in that position. And, like, you know, if you're from the D, especially, you had to get it out of Ferris and all that. He got that chip on his back, you know. T.A. putting him in the league. Tony Anise is putting him in the league at Ferris. Bro. Yeah. He got a good program. Mm-hmm. You ain't got to sleep. If you want to stay here, go D2. You know, hey, go there and show out, man. They winning natties, you know. So, it is what it is. A million ways to get to the league. Man, yeah, man. Coach Kelly. Kelly was up there at Grand Rapids for 20 years putting Ke- – everybody who left there, D1 went there, won the ring, and went to the league still. Mm-hmm. Like, that was a thing for like 20 years straight. Mm-hmm. Michigan State, Michigan ain't treating you right. Oh, come on over here. <laughs> like, come on over here. So, you know, our, our community, we trying to play catch up, man. So, generational wealth is real big. You feel me? So, what's some of the things you, you know, doing while you playing ball right now still? And what's some of the things you plan to do, you know? Post your career, you know what I'm saying? To stay getting that money, try to create it for the family forever. So I did it already. You feel me? I got blessed uh, in 2019 and gave me 10. And from there, they ain't let me back in the league after 2020. And uh, I had to learn business. So that's what I've been doing the last 
two years. So I invested in the essentials. Uh, invested in alkaline water, detox water, and I invested in the farm, lettuce farm. So I'm breaking more than my storefront up in Ann Arbor, and I'm basically pulling together the whole city from elementary school, church, boxing gym, tattoo parlor, jewelry, uh, therapy, mental health institutions, sewing it back up into uh, Ann Arbor and got my uh, Sprinter vans, uh, uh, all of the stuff just to commute back and forth, selling my water units, selling salads, making sure everything cope aesthetic. I got a farm that I'm about to uh, acquire in Hawaii. I'm in the middle of the ocean, peace and that between Japan and America. So I'm about to just have fun, bro. Man, that's dope, man. I come from a farming family, so you know what I'm saying? That's dope. I love hearing that. Like, I do landscaping to this day. So here you talking about something you got a, you know, a farm and growing lettuce, man. That's right up my alley. Yeah, we always talk about that, man. I mean, uh, say the essentials. In this world today with inflation, how expensive just food is in general and these food deserts all around and – Everybody drinking pop and eating bowl stuff. It don't judge you. Do what you do. But uh-huh. if you notice, all cancer and comorbidities is up like a thousand percent. Thousand like y'all got to drink some water and eat some greens. Like y'all bodies is messed up. You know what I mean? Thousand. And so, but what made that idea? What What, what made you think of that? Like you know, I'm gonna put my money here because you could be, be you could be in crypto, real mm-hmm. estate, everything. Everybody else already do is tricky. Thousand. But so in 2020, I, uh, as I was sitting out, I've been cramping since '03. And I was training with this one trainer. He had me drinking this different water. I'm up, it was like Kangen water. And I was just like, all right, that's cool. But I couldn't remember what that mug was at the time. So I had checked Instagram to go search and see if I had found some more water because it made me feel good. Stealth had DM me on Thanksgiving 2020. I was like, bro, I need one of y'all, one of y'all, Machine, send that mug, paid for it, got it installed, and then I drank the water. Instantly, I already knew. I said, it's the one. Like So uh, it's like the reverse osmosis system? Ah, uh, it's, it's, it's a machine. It's an alkaline It's an alkaline water system. So it's like uh, it's, it's ours is a triple layer filtration system that, that uh, the, the water get ran through. It's the electrosis process, scientific electrosis process. Once the water gets shot, it's bubbles, hydrogen bubbles in there. Right. That's the detox and the oxidation part and would clean you out, make you go to the bathroom, do all right. that type, clear your skin up, do all that. And that's what had that lactic acid. I get a lot of lactic because I'm so powerful, so explosive. Had a lot of lactic acid in my blood and in my diet. Start drinking the water, bro. I'm talking about from my skin, my extra workout, every, everything just going crazy. I'm, I'm bouncing higher. I'm like, okay, this the one. So I invested in that. Had to figure out that community and how to make people buy water, that like a unit that costs $45 to $5,500. I couldn't do it. So then from there, I started to find things that partner with that mug. And just five days ago, they gave me the keys to the farm and just today, you feel me? They told me it's my farm, I own it. Go have fun. So it's it's a blessing that you know right away, say keep going. I started in twenty nineteen the journey, but keep going, it's twenty twenty three. Acquired a farm, you know what I'm saying? Made that investment to partner to what I'm doing with the rest of my stuff. So it's trials and tribulations and you'll find it along the way. Yeah, that's dope. Yo, man, is there anything else you want to get out to the people, man, before we close up? Uh, just, you know, get your mental health checked on. You feel me? Like, everybody got everybody got problems. You know what I'm saying? Like, we don't necessarily know what problems we got. I was blessed enough to get to live in Florida for the last eight years. But some called SAD syndromes or seasonal depression syndrome that we deal with up here in, in the Midwest that we don't know about. And then, you know, the air quality ain't helping the, the balances. So just... Go talk to therapists, you know, come to the outlet 11. We got therapists there in Ann Arbor and just make sure we, we eating healthy and living right. Man, sign me up, man. I need to come, man. The air quality, man. Nah, it's a vibe up there. The air quality, 
Well, he was talking about the seasonal stuff, that lack of vitamin D, which became a big thing with COVID because black people didn't know why they were dying first. Was well, you got melanin in your skin, you need the sun, and the sun not all, you can't go outside. <laughs> and then they didn't realize that like vitamin D regulates like 5% of the whole human genome, mm-hmm. mainly with the lungs. 100%. So, yeah, it didn't even have nothing to do with what they were saying. It's education, though. It's just, education. You know, getting the lights in, the, it's different lights that you can put into your, uh, your house. Um, Different things just to combat all of that. And it just, that's why I, I, I guess, you know, you got to leave and come back. That's what the, all the OGs said back in the day. And that's what I was blessed to be able to do. Yeah. So, first off, where can they find you on your socials? Uh, Uncle Funch on uh, on Instagram. That's all I use pretty much. Hit me on there. Got my, my assistants on there. All of the stuff to get in contact with me on there. So, Get up there, free game for everybody. You know, storefront opening up, 7-Eleven in Ann Arbor. But free game, bro, DM me. I'll get back to y'all on an entrepreneurship journey, on life itself. You need a therapist, you can talk to me. You ain't got to pay nobody. Got time for everybody. I don't really go to sleep. But it just hit me up, bro. I'm just here to get a free game about what I went through and how to be successful. Man, so look, Funch, we appreciate you coming out, man. This was fun. This is the type of stuff, you know, me and Merle, we got these relationships with our cats our age and like yourself or whatnot, and we love when y'all come to the show because we can give a little bit more game. We can give a lot more content, but something that can chew on for real. You know what I mean? So we appreciate you coming back whenever you want. I appreciate that. It's the player exchange. Y'all not getting this nowhere else. Nowhere. And we out. Yes, sir.